So when I write uh, the music for my albums, it's mainly on piano, which is my first instrument, and everything is very specified, which means every little notes for the melody are written. Uh, ev of course, every chords, all the the things and links between, uh, uh, let's say, verses or choruses, as you want to call it, are written. Then I put everything in a in a computer, just do a demo, and send it to the musicians, just for them to learn the music, to learn the melodies, to learn everything that I wrote. Of course, when we're in studio, uh, we uh, rehearse the piece and uh, each one of the instrument players just can find out if it's right written for them. Sometimes they have to change little things just to, uh, to, uh, to sound better themselves. But most of the time we keep what I, what I wrote. And concerning the improvisation, it's not much improvisation uh, possibilities on, on the music I'm, I'm writing. There's like a few moments, there's kind of a few uh, places when, when they can, of course, improvise inside the, the, the music I wrote. But it's, it's, uh, I've decided before, which means I'm not into improvisations, okay, let's go in, improvise for like 32, 64, 80 bars. It's just like you're going to have like 16 or 24 bars and just like build your solo just to get there. And then when you finish with your solo, we go back to the theme or we go back to the intro, whatever is written. But it's everything is pretty well structured. And most of the time we don't, in studio, we don't really change the structures. We can of course, you know, when you finish like a, a theme and you want to get back to a, to a re-intro, to play the intro again, then of course we decide just to add two bars just to have a little bit of a, you know, suspension there. But most of the time it, it's not big changes for the structures. So it's true that uh, each album that I've, that I've been uh, making since the beginning with ECM is uh, a different band of, uh, of musicians each time. And I think it's, it's the idea. I think if you, if you just consider that you write music, which is your own music, so of course you know your own limits, it helps you to change musicians because they're going to bring you a lot of uh, different things that you're not expecting. So uh, since the very first one and up to this one, it's, uh, it's a real decision of myself to change musician. And I've, I've done that before writing, which means I meet someone and because of him, I'm going to have him in my mind and think about him. Of course, when I say meeting someone, which means we played together. So I know not all of his playing, but like the, the most which, is, which I'm interested in, which means his style. And from this, when I write the music on the piano, I really have his style and have this guy in mind, which means I'm trying to write thinking about him. Of course, I'm not saying I know exactly how to write for him, but I just got the essence of his style, which helps for me to write the whole music. And I guess writing the music for different instrument player each time leads you in different directions. So that's what happened on the, on the, on the last album. Uh, the consideration about changing uh, this lot of musicians for this new album is uh, mainly the, the main thing was the organ. Since the first album with ECM, which I made three, I was using acoustic piano and a little bit on the last album on, on, on Playground. I used, oh sorry, not on Playground, third round. I used Fender Rhodes. And I, want, I wanted to have uh, the organ, Hammond organ. I'm, I'm a big fan of this this instrument, mainly by the sound of it. And I thought uh, it would be interesting to uh, to get this uh, uh, new instrument on board with the style of drumming that I, I provide. And so the main concern, my main concern, was 
I have to find an organ player able to play with me, which is which means like really having kind of a, a duet thing. Uh, and then from, from then thinking, okay, if this organ and drums are the basic rhythm section instead of a bass and, and drums, organ and, and drums, then is the saxophone going to work? Is the trumpet going to work? I could have, you know, used a guitar, but that, I mean, the, the fact was, let's start from this new instrument for this new album. I want to have an organ player and I, I want to have the sound of an organ on the new album with the drums and then will fit what we need to uh, to have on the top of it and uh, so that was the main uh, consideration for me for this new project to have to to start from a new instrument instead of thinking okay i'm going to go in a different uh, uh, direction for the music was not the case it was mainly okay let's start with this, this instrument and then it's going to lead me uh, in a different way and of course the music's going to be sounding different as well So I was answering the, the question before about the organ and of course uh, uh, Tude Brunborg, which is playing the saxophone on the, since the, almost the beginning of my, uh, of my album with DCM, I think he, he joined in on the third album, uh, is, is for me the, 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 is the main, kind of the main leader sonically, which means his sound, his playing, his approach of my music, his approach of playing the themes and the melodies I'm writing is for me in my head. So what I hear from him is just right. So Toure, even I mean, of course, on 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 the records and on on live performances, is the one for me which I really um, consider that is the is is the sound I want to provide. If I would, I mean, I'm a drummer, so I. Even if I'm the leader of this, I'm, I can't lead as a, as a, as, a, as a band member the the band because this is drums very rhythmical and even if I play in a melodic way, the sound of a drums is the sound of a drums. It's not like a like a saxophone or a trumpet or piano. So finding Toure was for me something very very special when I met him first because it's exactly what I could provide if I was playing a different instrument so that's why this guy is uh, still I met him he's on board and I just love to play with him and he's really part of my music I think if I would have to change uh, uh, the saxophone player to another one it would be a sounding totally different because now I'm really used of his use of his of his style of his way of playing the notes of his way of soloing and uh, it's really part of, of me so you know most of the time when you listen to uh, to records with with different band members you always have someone in the band which always stay there is is not the guarantee of the music it's because I think through him the music uh, written is exactly what it needs to be and I think through Toure that's exactly that is the one which makes my music appears the way I hear it in my head. So it is, it is true that it's the first album on ECM and actually the first album in my life that I'm not using a bass player and I'm very, very known and very used to be like functioning with a bass player. Actually on the last album, third round, Pino, which I know for many, many years was there and I, I mean, we know each other as, you know, almost as brothers, so we don't, we know it's going to work in, in, you know, in the, the, the very moment when playing together, instantly it's there. So it was really a decision of myself of saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to, send, to, to change the approach of the music I'm writing and the music I'm performing. So I thought to change this, I could change and get, as I said before, a guitar player, or I could get you know, another uh, leading instrument. But I thought if I'm changing radically from using a bass player, which I'm really used in the sound of it, like bass and drums of 
you know, or in my career, it would be radically different. So I thought using an organ, that's why I was, I think, uh, you know, really into uh, having this uh, organ player in the band. Organ player, of course, you got two hands and you got your feet and you can play bass lines as well, which is not close to bass line from the instrument, from the electric bass or uprighting bass, but it's, it's, a, it's a bass sound, which means it makes the whole atmosphere of my music sounding still with bass, but not as defined as, a, as an electric bass or, upright, or you know, like acoustic bass. And I thought maybe using, and I think now because I've done the album I know, because I've heard it, using uh, someone, an, an, an instrument player, playing bass lines, not exactly as, as an electric or acoustic, but having the bass sound around, which helps me maybe eventually, and actually I think it did, sounding m more free and getting the, 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 the way I play differently. And actually when we, after writing, I didn't know because when you write, you hear things and it's on the paper, then you put it in a demo, as a demo in the computer, you don't know where you're going. Once you're all together with the musicians and you try the, the pieces, then the sound is there. And actually, which is very, very interesting, you have this sound, you have the sound around. So I, let's say that I'm playing with the sound instead of playing in the sound. The, the sound is surrounding us, like that bass sound from the organ, from the pedal board or just for the left hand. And then the, the rest is the same, the rest is similar. And you're just playing around a sound, which means like it's for me definitely more freedom. So I can re really play, not as per percussive as I did sometimes, it's like maybe grooving, maybe that just like very, very uh, flowing, like waiting. It's all of a sudden like many, many different possibilities for me as a drummer to, uh, to approach my own music. So it's, it was, uh, I think, a, a good idea just to have this change. And I think when you listen to the music, to the album, it leads you once again in a, in a different uh, universe, I mean atmosphere, a different sphere, because uh, you have a bass sound, but you can't really say the notes, I mean you hear the notes of course, but you can't really, it's not as distinctive as a, as a, as a real bass, it's, it's, it's a sound, it's, it's a kind of a bass entity which everyone is around playing with it. So I think it makes it very, very interesting. Yeah, I've been working with my friend now for quite a while and I really appreciate the man. It's, I mean, I, and I trust him, which is uh, the main thing when you work with a producer. Uh, except of him being the, the head of ECM, I've been, as, as, you, as you ask, I mean, be a guest on, on different projects with ECM. But when it came to, uh, to uh, my own albums, the first time uh, we worked with Manfred, I, I asked him by sending him demos if he would like to be producing my, uh, my music. And so he listened to, the, to it and said, yes, I, I, I'm willing to do it. I think it's interesting. So then it's been now the fourth album. He's still the producer. And as I said, I really trust him, which means like sometimes he's not really into, not the music, but the instrument I'm, I'm using on the, in the band. And uh, even, even that is just listening to it and, and it's got a great point each time when we cut the tracks in the, in the studio. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking when you work on, a, on an album, instrumental of singing, whatever, it doesn't matter, I think you have to have a pair of ears outside telling you, I think it's the right cut, I think you should do it again, I think there's a nice emotion, I think the structure is not totally there, you should maybe add some bars here and there. And he's the one, he knows exactly, he's listening, he's very concentrated during the session period, and he's listening to everything I've, I've, we do, to everything I say, and everything I would like to reach. And considering this, uh, all of this, he's just listening to the, the, the tracks and say, okay Manu, I think you've reached what you would 
talking about, or maybe not yet, maybe you should do it again, maybe you should do a different tempo, etc., etc. So I think it's, a very, uh, it's very wise. And as I said, I, I trust him, so I know when I'm, I finish a track, going in a, into the control room and, and listening to it because he said you should come in. I know there's something there. So even if it's not the, the last, the, the very good take, I know from what he heard, that's a very good thing for me to have in mind. That's something he likes and something that we finding the beginning of a, of a, of a, of a, good, uh, of a good take. So. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite pleased to have uh, Manfred as a, as a producer. Sometimes it's tough, sometimes it's hard, sometimes he's not agree with me, sometimes I don't agree with him. But that's the fact of being in a studio and working with someone else. Of course, we not have the same mind, we don't have the same taste sometimes. And, uh, and, uh, and we argue, but that's, that's the, 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 the main thing in uh, being an artist. I mean, someone has to tell you things that uh, no one's going to tell you, and, and Manfred is good at this. Nils Peter Molvar is, uh, is, a, is, a, is an amazing musician. I've been listening to his music since a while, and I met the guy, and uh, what made me having the possibility of uh, having him in the band was like we had a collaboration with him and Paolo Frizu in Montreal for the, the, the jazz fest, during the jazz festival. And we went just impro and loops and stuff and sounds and I just found out in real because the only thing I, you know, since I, I knew his music was listening to him on records. And then we played together and I think we had something in common. So. I asked him if he would wanted to to uh, to join in for this new album, and he said yes. So since as soon as he said yes, as I said before at the beginning of this interview, as I had he, he, him in mind, I didn't know him much, but I, I I could find out and could I mean so start exactly where he's going in his sound in his approach of the music, and I have to say I'm I'm, I'm more than pleased because what he brought on the album is just like. Beautiful, of course. You know, Jim Watson on the organ is just unbelievable, and he plays piano too, acoustic piano. Tule Brunberg, as I said, is you know, is my main man, and and Niels Peter, which was new in in the in the thing as well. Just we had the whole the music, the themes and everything, the the, the small solos here and there, the groove and everything, the the the, the atmosphere, and and Niels Peter just brought the whole thing to a. To, uh, to glue it, because it just brought through his, his way of playing, his way of sounding, using, you know, like the microphone in his trumpet and singing in it and using effects and, and some loops and some weird thing on the computer, just made the whole thing really uh, uh, interactive, of course, with us, but then the whole thing very, very unique. And uh, I don't know if it would have been the case with another trumpet player, actually, and that's why when we met and when we played together, I, I, I knew instantly that this guy and, and ourselves, the other members of the band, would do something really creative. And that's what it is. When you listen to the album, you just hear that it just brought, like, of course, his influence, his, uh, his culture, but, and plus he's very, very close to Tule Brunberg, so they, they know how to play together, which is you know, it's a good blend together, which helps. But then, mainly for me, was this character, the character of uh, the sound and his, his approach on the music. And then he does some other dubs, you know, on, on his own playing, and it just, it's, it's quite, it's quite amazing because it, as I said, it glued the whole thing, but then it took the whole thing in a, in a once again, in a different direction, it just opened it up, but very widely and pretty, on some tracks, uh, I didn't expect that because it just brought some ideas which is like, I was like, okay, needs better, just like, that's brilliant. So I think I was a very, very good choice and I was very, very happy that he agreed to, uh, to play on this uh, new album.
Jim Watson, the organ player, as I said, I wanted to have an organ player. There's not many, many organ players in, that, in Europe playing organ and playing piano and playing bass, you know, the, the, the bass pedal board and playing a bit of jazz as I, I'm, I'm considering jazz today. And we met uh, on my TV show in One Shot Not. Uh, he played there with, a, with another uh, artist and I just noticed his way, his approach of organ was beautiful. Then I spoke to uh, Pino Palladino, my mate, and uh, I said, Pino, do you know a good organ player in, in England? And he, and he mentioned his name. I said, oh, I met the guy. He came to my show with, a, with an artist and I, I've actually I've just noticed that he's, he's got something very special. So then I had a, a concert on a, on a jazz festival during uh, last summer and I asked him, plus the band that I had at the time, to join in just to be there as just an organ player. So I sent him the music that we played at the time from Playground, Neighborhood and Third Round and just, you know, learn it and, and, and played with it. And it was just a beautiful festival. I mean, what he brought was very, very, uh, of course, nice, but uh, very strong. And uh, then we had another opportunity to work again because in, during that jazz festival we had Michel and Deo Cello with, with join in on bass with Pino Paladino and Jim Watson was there. So then Michelle was invited in my, I invited her in my show in One Shot Not and she said I would like to have the same band as we had in that festival which means Pino and Jim. So once again we played together. And then I really said to Jim, I, I, I asked him, would you be uh, interested in, in joining the band? I mean, like recording the album and then touring together. Because I think there's something together that really works. And, uh, and he said, yes, so that's why you don't know him very well. Yet. I think he's more like I was before part of the pop folk area. And, uh, but he's got a, a, a jazz background and, uh, and he plays, you know, either piano, acoustic piano or organ. And, and I'm, I'm pleased because I think he's going to, he's really fit, he fits the music and his approach is a bit like me being, coming from a different culture area, of, let's say pop and, uh, and, and pr playing with that culture in mind, jazz music. And I think he's very at ease. Is, is very very good and uh, since we uh, started the album and did some some gigs together uh, it worked well and plus as all the English people he's got a great sense of humor which is uh, which Nils Peter and Turi was very very funny in studio.